What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today, me and the Marsman crew are going to be reviewing Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores, which is the DLC, obviously the continuation of the story. And obviously, when we do our reviews, we like to give the good, the bad, and we give our ratings as well as whether you should buy this now, later, or not at all. So let's jump right into it with the good. And overall, when you look at this DLC, obviously $20 on the price tag. Wow, back to the old DLC prices <laughs> from the back in the day. And when I'm looking at the good, obviously this is a continuation of the story. So obviously getting some new insight on Aloy and getting some more background into kind of her story after the, the campaign, main campaign uh, ends um, from Horizon Forbidden West. But I really like the things that they added. I mean, you're talking about a, a game that has nine more uh, new legendary weapons with more equipments. We have 20 out, roughly 20 plus hours of gameplay, which is great. Whether you're talking about the main story, which is, I think we talked about six, six to nine, nine hours. hours of gameplay yep. and 13 to 16 for the side quests. And which all is that, like the average. So a lot of people yeah. usually go over the average. But yeah, usually that's like average. For, yeah, if you're a speed run, probably going shorter. But but yeah, I agree with you. And, and it, obviously this is like, a uh you know, a dlc so it's only 20 bucks which is great you get you get you're, you get a dollar a dollar per hour of gameplay <laughs> basically so that's that's pretty great to see and obviously you're getting a brand new and i think the biggest positive for me from this is aloy is back and this is actually a story that dives more into her character development um as a person and and this is evidently shown through new characters uh, specifically i can probably butcher the name but uh, Saika. Um, is the new character that was added. Uh, a lot of debate with that. I'm sure Frank, will, me and you will talk about this one as well. But brand new character. But there's also a lot of old characters kind of like, you know, kind of mixed in a little bit throughout. Uh, but this is a story. This is a character development story of Aloy um, and kind of her journey. And you see a lot of things unfold throughout this entire time. So I think it's a good thing because you, you have additions that are great. You have more continuation of the story. Um, which was already pretty big uh, from the last game. From my, my, you can check out the review for that I had for Horizon Forbidden West up here. Um, but yeah, I would definitely. I think it was a really good one here. But Frank, what you? What was your positive or good that you saw here? Yeah, you mentioned a lot of the things I was going to say, but let's just talk about graphics. I think this is one of the better visually. Uh, and Horizon Forbidden West was really strong visually, but the DLC, you know, kind of felt like it took it up another notch, and that just ran on the PS5. And you got to give Gorilla, uh, the developer Gorilla, um, a lot of credit because I think they're one of the top five best developers in graphics. And they kind of showcase the power of the PS5 here. And the physics in the game, there was a lot of large scale. And we saw this a little bit in Horizon for Forbidden, large scale battles. And, um, you know, they, they kind of added that in this as well. Yeah. And so with the good, we have to talk about the bad. Um, my biggest issue, and I saw this a lot of people agreed with me on multiple reviews and other people that played the game. That the villain and the boss fights really just did not match the tier that we saw with previous installments of this game it felt like a lot of people were saying that their negative was because that this was more of a character development arc that it didn't really dive into a lot of the villains or um even the boss fights felt like repetitive they didn't necessarily feel unique like they were from the main title um and i feel like that's pretty messed up because of the fact that you saw that horizon forbidden west had very vast boss fights they had vast char villain characters that were very unique and different and you know i feel like that was kind of like a surprise to me that they have all these different characters in this in this game but they just did not really emphasize or really focus on the especially just what they had there already and just build on brand new characters because they they've done it before right they've had some new characters that they added in previous uh you know dlcs that they a lot of people liked so I thought that was just a surprising negative that I did not expect to see for this. But Frank, what was your negative that you saw? Yeah, I mean, my negative, and I agree with you, I think some boss by battles hit were hit and miss right so not all of them were as uh, appetizing as we would hope. And like you said, the antagonist, you know, that was also hit and miss. So they had some hit and miss components when it came to boss fights and the antagonist kind of arc stuff. So. That to me is definitely a bad. And obviously, you know, there's a bad that's outside the DLC, which is the uh, non, we don't want to spoil things for those that might not have played it, but the kiss of death is what I'll say, um, using one of the main character arcs, which was really terrible thing to see. You know, when we try to give our good and bad, we don't like talking about things that are dumb to talk about, which is one of the things is the main characters 
interest um, in their yeah. partner. Yeah, and it's not even like we're mad. We're not mad at the game for doing making that choice. It's more yeah. about we're angry at the people who are making that such yes. a big deal that you know in 2023 in 2023 you're making that big of a deal with as many yeah. you know whatever you have the ability to choose what you want to do in this game and that's kind of the yes. point so that's that's kind of the whole thing but let's finalize with our ratings um when i was thinking about the rating i i you know you see metacritic had 82 open critic had 81 yeah. i was surprisingly close but i was actually higher than both of them i had an 80 uh, 8.3 for mine I felt like obviously it, people will rag on this game for being a character development game, but DLCs are usually that way. Like they want to, obviously, I think a lot of people are saying that this, this entire DLC's conflict did not amass to a larger scale like previous games or previous installments have done before. And I do agree with that. But I also am going to say not every DLC is the world ender either yeah. because you let's just say you make a comparison, right? I'll say Witcher 3, I'll be brief about this. Witcher 3 has had many DLCs in the past and not every single one was the end all be all final battle that was epic that would destroy everything like they had areas that were interested in they had stories that finalized that that area didn't mean that it was going to end the world if if, if, if uh, Geralt didn't stop everybody you know what i mean like that's not doesn't always have to be a the giant scale uh, you know is, issue so i still think it's an 8.3 but i definitely can give it some criticism i'm not really giving enough for villains or boss fights that not meet that expectation so Frank, what would be your rating here? Yeah, I'm an 8.2. I'm, I'm very close to you um, for a lot of the reasons that you said. I think they provide enough content. I mean, six to nine hours of the main story and, you know, 13 plus for, for everything. I think there's enough content there, but some of it was hit and miss. And so that's the unfortunate part. And that's what we want to talk about instead of dumb, you know, non, you know, important things like love interests. But we could talk about what's important in these games. And I thought the gameplay was good, but there were just some things that could have been better. Yeah, and lastly, let's talk. Do you think do we, that these people should buy this now, later, or not at all? And I'll say mine first. The fact is, I'd buy this right now, mainly because of the fact that you're getting so much bang for your buck. You're paying twenty dollars, classic DLC pricing. You're getting twenty plus hours of gameplay with new equipment, brand new map, new characters, and you're getting more interesting information about Aloy and how she is and why she is the way that she is. Right? It's just more yeah. background. More background into her as a, as a character, yeah. and I think that's a good thing to see for main characters that you know will have a brand new game. I was in the near, and not say near future, but in the future that you want to see more depth, in, right? And I feel like that's something that's important. So I would say buy, buy buy this game or buy this DLC now. But Frank, what is your opinion here? I agree with you, and I do think character DLCs are somewhat important for certain characters and Alloy is a is a perfect example because there's a lot of talk about her over the first two games is does she have enough character development for her right so I do think it is important whether people agree or disagree with the choices that they're made but um, I think it is important for her and they like you mentioned bang for your buck is a big one to me and there's enough gameplay and equipment that that should satisfy you and I think Horizon Forbidden West fans should definitely jump in on it. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for the video. What is your opinion about Horizon Forbidden West, Bernie Shores? And leave your comments in the comments below. And obviously, if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. You can also find us on Twitch, where we stream two to three days a week and as located in the description below, as well as our socials, which is also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace out, guys.